very exciting times at Sierra Circuits. And uh, thanks again for, for joining. I've been doing this for a long time. I'll just skip that. Uh, so uh, this is the quick table of contents. I think all these topics are very important. Um, there's no one topic more important than another, in my opinion. But this today's uh, this is the topics for today's discussion on uh, flex and rigid flex. So just a real quick uh, uh, introduction to the materials. So. Flex substrates are made of polyimid materials. Um, you know, PCB materials need to be able to withstand shock, vibration, um, solder reflow process, you know, all of that. And then they also need to perform well, um, you know, with uh, in terms of signal integrity and control impedance. Um, flex traditionally has been a little bit behind in uh, electrical properties compared to rigid materials. Uh, so today we'll address some tricks that you can do. Um, and just as a side note, uh, we have been doing projects with um, some flex material manufacturers, um, you know, to try and help them with their electrical performance of their materials. So I'm sure there'll be lots of changes in the industry, um, you know, soon. So I think that's great. One thing to really uh, know the difference as well, other than electrical performance, uh, flex materials use what's called uh, ED copper or electrodeposited copper. Um, you know, another way to say it is like kind of rolled and annealed copper. Um, oh, sorry, I got that backwards. So rigid boards use ED or electrodeposited copper and flex and rigid flex type, type of materials use the rolled and annealed copper, which has better properties. And that's what uh, this slide is about. So if you take a look at this, you'll see that the, um, you know, the elongation tensile strength are better uh, for rolled and annealed copper. So when you go through your material selection for flex materials, definitely talk to your manufacturer. But in general, there is adhesive based and adhesive list. Uh, adhesive list um, means that it's more like a rigid core. And adhesive based means that there's adhesive uh, as well um, in your stack up. Now, adhesive can cause all sorts of reliability issues. Uh, so just really be aware are you using an adhesive base or adhesive list um, material set? And so, adhesives, uh, I've seen, you know, when you're trying to uh, clean the inside of the via using a plasma, for example, uh, that adhesive may react differently than the other materials in your stack up, especially a rigid flex stack up. And so you have to be careful of, you know, the reliability side of the, of things for the board, like, um, you know, wicking and, you know, proper etch back and, um, any sort of dendrite growth that can happen. Uh, so, yeah, just be aware of those things is, I guess, the point. And uh, the second example is adhesive lists. Now, here are some of the types of adhesives used. Now, I can't say this is a rigid flex or flex uh, webinar without talking about bend radius. Uh, so, bend radius is really important. Um, Every manufacturer has a slightly different take on bend radius. But I think the key thing is to know, are you designing for the bend radius that you need? Uh, and that's really determined um, by the thickness of your dielectric materials and also how you lay out your PCB or how you design your PCB on those uh, flex layers. So uh, just be really aware of that. That's, that's an important thing. And we'll discuss a little bit that later. So here also we want to bring in electrical factors um, that can, you know, also impact the bend uh, capabilities of your board. So control impedance designs, they may require thicker flex materials, um, which again, thicker materials can reduce your bend radius. So in the order of things, you should probably have your understanding of the mechanicals first uh, and then 
but at the same time, kind of in parallel, what are your electrical requirements? And is there controlled impedance on this design? And what kind of thicknesses and uh, trace widths are you gonna be aiming for to meet your impedance requirements? Once mechanicals are set in place, it becomes very hard for any changes to happen, right? So I would say try and do those in uh, parallel. So in terms of uh, design rules, uh, you know, this is a pretty uh, boilerplate, but important that you, on the flex especially, uh, you don't want any sharp edges. You want some nice, rounded corners uh, when you're designing flex boards. And then when you're designing, uh, you need to know, you need to be aware of your core uh, and how you're designing on either side of your core. And you don't want to have your conductors line up. You want a staggered approach to how your conductors um, are placed from layer to layer. Uh, so that's an important aspect for the bendability um, for flex boards. Uh, I know that if you're, you have concerns for crosstalk and things like that, you would do um, perpendicular traces on every other layer and uh, in flex, you don't always have that luxury. So just to be aware of how your traces are placed on either side of a flex core, um, can be really uh, helpful and important to your to your bendability. Uh -huh. So here, uh, rigid flex design guides uh, also include stack up. So stack up considerations are you know really understand your via keep out areas. You know where your cover lay is going to go. Um, you know those are important things to uh, keep keep in uh, keep in mind. And here you can see the cover lay doesn't go all the way through the, the complete construction, which is really important. So we wanna always balance the rigid sections. Uh, you don't want an uneven thickness on the rigid section. So if you have a rigid flex rigid, if you can keep the rigid sections to the same thicknesses, um, at the very minimum, that would be the most ideal uh, thing to do. Um, some common uh, flex cores, one mil can be a you know very common use case, but when you're doing controlled impedance designs, we recommend to have a little bit thicker um, flex materials, uh, like two to three mils. And in terms of copper weights, your options are there is a third ounce, there's also half ounce and one ounce. So all those um, can be used. 